Hi, Eric Gibault, ericgibault.com, and today I receive you in the National Park of Teide, Canadia, Las Canadas del Teide, in the Canary Islands, in Tenerife. Behind me, the Teide volcano, which is the third highest volcano in the world, if you measure from the bottom of the sea. And above the sea, it's 3,718 meters. But I'm not here to speak about the Mount Teide. I'm here to explain to you how to measure light when you have snow. So how to expose properly. Let's start. Uh, I'm going to move to an area where there's more snow because the snow have uh, melted a lot uh, because uh, the, the sun, obviously, and many people came here to play. So there's less snow, but I'm going to find a place where it's a lot whiter. So uh, I show you the effect. Uh, what does your camera when it's actually measuring on snow and how to actually do it properly. So let's move on. First of all, I apologize for the noise. Uh, to get snow, it's impossible to be without people because there are many people playing. So I stopped on the side of the road, there are many cars passing by. And here I've got white snow, so I can do the demo, but there, there is some noise, sorry about that, no choice. Okay, so what happens when you actually do a snow a picture with snow or really white uh, sand or maybe even a wedding dress if it's really a close-up, okay? So, uh, normally your camera or your light meter is calculating as if it was a gray card of 18%. Some Canon use 12%, okay? But I don't know if still they still do that, but used to be, okay? So it means that your camera or your light meter thinks this is gray. So it thinks it's overexposed. So automatically, it's going to underexpose or give you the wrong information where you have the small uh, bar that moves in your viewfinder or in your LCD screen to tell you the, the measure it thinks it is. So you actually manually compensate, you, but you're wrong. And if it's automatic, well, it will automatically underexpose because it thinks it's overexposed, but it's not. So I show you a trick. Here's the light meter. When you point at the sun, at about one o'clock in the afternoon right now and uh, it's always at 100 ISO uh, 125th of a second uh, it gives you f16 so I can show you right now oh yeah f16 as you can see okay it always gives f16 okay so unless it was artificial light nothing is going to give you more light than the Sun except if the measure is wrong so I'm going to go do a, put a spot meter right now and I'm going to point at the white snow. Okay. As you can see, it tells me F32. So this is not normal. How can this reflecting material give more light than the original light? Well, just because the light meter is making a mistake. You think this is gray, 18%, but it's not. So it means that when you're going to make a picture, it will give you an error. So your camera will be wrong or the information you get from your camera or from a spot meter or for a light meter will be wrong. So you need to know how to cope with it with your camera. So here's my Olympus. I'm going to show you. By the way, this is a strap that Carol, uh, Claudia Reyes makes. So if you're interested, you can contact her. I'll leave a link below. OK, so let's carry on. So now we're going to see what the camera does. Uh, this is on Olympus uh, OMD uh, 5 Mark II. It starts at ISO 200, but doesn't matter. We're going to see what the camera tells when it measures itself. I'm going to get the camera a bit uh, closer. You won't see much, but give you a bit more of an idea, maybe. Okay. I'm going to put the small uh, bar in the center. Break, break, break. Well, yesterday with all these cars, uh, it was hard to concentrate, so I forgot to tell a few things. Uh, it's very important the way you use your uh, measure, the way you measure light with your camera. There are several ways. You can have a, a spot a center, you can have a matricial, you can have a ponderate, uh, I think it's ponderate, average, average, okay? So it depends if it's measuring light on the whole picture or just the center, all this. Obviously, if you're uh, pointing at just snow, you just see snow, like I have a picture a bit further about to show the texture. Uh, obviously, it doesn't matter what way you're using to measure light. But uh, if you have an area as like the road on this picture I'm doing now, uh, the road or the, the spot of uh, land there is, 
obviously this is darker so the mistake will not be as big because it's doing an average if you're in matricial if you're in spot and you point at, at snow obviously the, the the error will be two uh two stops more or less okay but in my case i use my olympus i am matricial so i have I, it's uh, calculate the, the the exposure on the full picture and this darker part help the camera not to make such a big mistake okay so this is why in this picture i've made my error is not two stops it's about a stop and a half a stop on a third more or less okay so uh, i use matricial on my olympus because it lets me have uh, a warning a highlight warning and shadow warning in real time so uh, actually i've got a video about this to explain how to configure an olympus to have the, the the warning in real time so this is why i get these results so when you configure your camera make sure you use uh, the way to measure uh, is uh, the one that helps you know the mistake uh, you get okay so i'm going to make the picture and supposedly this uh, picture is properly exposed okay so now I'm going to do one stop more exposure. So it goes in, in a third uh, increment, one full stop to three. Let's do it. And still open, uh, do one more stop of more light. Okay, I've got the overexposed uh, lighting. As you can see with two stop uh, compensation this is too much my picture is overexposed why because what i explained the matricial way I, i'm measuring but actually if uh, now I, re I, I work on the highlights uh, as you can see it's now perfectly exposed because the good thing about having uh, compensated two stops made that i've got uh, all the snow uh, right without uh, having uh, any loss of the of data and the shadows are okay too with the darker part like the road and the land are okay i've got details there so now i correct uh, the exposure and i've got probably the best exposure of all three so uh, don't hesitate to push two stops and then you'll get it if you just go a bit over you will uh, get it back in post-production uh, with the highlights uh, correction and that's it which one do you think is better exposed? The one the camera tells it's right or the one I over, uh, actually overexposed myself to compensate the mistake? As you can see, if you don't do that, all your snow picture will be underexposed because the camera is telling you wrong. Okay, so this is really important. As you can see, whether you use a light meter or a camera, it will always make a mistake, okay? So it's very important you compensate. If you work in manual, you can compensate manually, obviously, but if your camera is in automatic or semi-automatic, you have a compensation button, so you can actually compensate. Check the manual of your camera to know where it is. So you will have to compensate plus one, plus one and a half, plus two. Uh, depends on the snow. It's not the same thing in the snow with direct sun than with more shade or mixed area, like I had some kind of uh, darker areas, okay? So uh, learn to know your camera, make several pictures to make sure, but you have to compensate, okay? So in case you use a smartphone, you can also do it because the app normally lets you compensate, uh, the, the put more or less uh, light exposure. So you should push up to get more light to compensate the mistake. Take care with smartphones and tablets. Sometimes what you see on the screen, because the ambient light is so strong, it will compensate uh, what you see, but not actually the picture. So you really need to know your gear to know if the thing is right or it's not, okay? So uh, important, you can use that for uh, white sands, but white sand will never reflect as much light. Maybe you have to compensate plus one, plus one and a half, maybe, plus one and uh, sometimes you can use it for wedding like you want to do a close-up of the wedding dress white wedding dress uh, with sun it's just white and then it will make a mistake also so you must know that when it's so white like this 
you will co have to compensate, otherwise you will get underexposed pictures. If you feel this information may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a small button down here and also a small bell. If you click on the bell, you get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, you can leave a comment below. I also leave you some links of my gear on Amazon, also links to other parts of my YouTube channel. Please, if you want, you can make a donation. I'll leave you my PayPal account below. And also, please take care of yourself and see you soon. Bye. Yeah.